Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I thought I'd make a video answering that age-old question, why am I still using a Mac Pro 5,1 in the year 2023, almost 2024? And the answer is, it's fast enough for me. Would I like a souped up Mac Studio. I'm actually gonna wait for the Mac Studio M3 to come out, the M3 Max. That'll be the sweet spot for me and I'll actually take the leap and upgrade. But for now, honestly, my Mac Pro 5,1 with everything I've installed into it is fast enough. And while I won't make the outrageous claim that I have the most powerful Mac Pro in the world, this is the most powerful Mac Pro in the world. It still serves my purposes really well. And so I thought I'd make a list of all the components I have installed. And I'd love to hear what you guys have installed in your Mac Pro 5 comma 1. And, uh, you know, a little show and tell. I'll leave links in the description to all the components. And I am an Amazon affiliate, so I will get a little kickback from that. You'll be helping out my channel. And as most of you know, I'm using Martin Lowe's Open Core package, which is now up to 0.9.7. And I am using Monterey 12.7.2, which is the most recent security update. And Monterey is basically the end of the road for Martin Lowe's Open Core package. If you want to install Ventura or Sonoma, you have to use Open Core Legacy Patcher. And the reason I stick with Martin Lowe's package, first off, I've been using it for years and it's been rock solid is the fact that my graphics card any of the RX 6000 series GPUs do not work with open core legacy patcher in Ventura or Sonoma so first up we have the Sonnet McFiver which I have installed in PCIe slot 1 I have two videos on this card so you can go check that out if you want more information on it but it's a great card you can have two NVMEs installed and you get two USB-C 10 gigabit ports and a 10 gigabit bit ethernet port and I have two two terabyte 970 Evo Plus is installed. And you know, the price for these varies every day. They cost something different. I've bought them for a hundred bucks for a two terabyte, and I've also paid like something close to this price. So let's call it 250 bucks for four terabytes. And as you can see, I get pretty darn good read and write speeds with the McFiver. And if I rated two of the NVMEs together, I'd be getting upwards of 5,000 megabytes per second read and write. And if you put four terabytes in a Mac Studio, it's going to cost you $600. Ouch! And that's the thing about all modern Macs. You cannot change your internal storage or RAM. You have to commit to whatever you want the day you buy it. The only Mac left that you can upgrade the internal storage is the M2 Mac Pro. But you still have to put in a PCIe card to do it. So you got to pay for the card. And then if you look at Apple's price for four terabytes in the Mac Pro, it's a thousand dollars extra. I honestly don't know why anyone would want to buy the M2 Mac Pro. And now that Apple upgrades their chips every year, this computer will be obsolete in a year. And the extremely overpriced Mac Pro from 2019, Apple has cut off the GPU upgrades in Mac OS. So you're only able to get up to an RX 6900 XT just like you can in the Mac Pro 5,1 with the help of some mods and open core. Apple has stopped putting new drivers into Mac OS for AMD latest GPUs, essentially screwing over the people who spent thousands of dollars on the 2019 Mac Pros. Just ask my buddy Greg Grant from the Definitive Mac Upgrade Guide. It's so nuts. So that is the new Mac Pro. It is the most configurable, most expandable, and by far the most powerful Mac we've ever made. And sadly the last as far as true expandability is concerned. Apple is already putting options in their Pro apps that will do things on the new M chips that the Intel chips cannot do. And if you look at the 2013 trash can, which I just picked up one for fun because it's so cheap. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. 
the prices on those have just absolutely plummeted. They have bottomed out and you can upgrade the internal RAM and the storage very easily. And it's still a very viable computer for music production. I just installed OpenCore Legacy Patcher and Sonoma on a two terabyte NVMe and I'm gonna install Logic Pro. So next up is the GPU. I got the RX 6800 XT made by Sonnet, but uh, the reality is I just happened to buy this one because it measured the right size to fit lengthwise into the Mac Pro 5 one. It's since been discontinued. I guess Sonic got in and out of the graphics business pretty darn quickly. They make eGPUs, but they're, I don't think they're selling graphics cards anymore. It was at a good price point and the right measurements, but I keep this in slot two. The McFivers in slot one because this graphics card is two and a half wide so it eats into the second slot and I need that 16 times slot for the McFiver to get the full speeds so I moved the RX 6800 XT to slot 2 and I put the McFiver in slot 1 and this way I have a nice amount of airflow for both cards but it totally covers slot 3 and actually is almost covering up slot 4 and as a test I tried putting in my Titan Ridge card into slot 4 and it did fit but as you can see there's like no breathing room for the fan on the GPU and I just don't think it's a good idea to be blocking it like that. You could put a very small USB 3.1 card or something in the slot and not block the fan completely but I don't really need that because I have this nice little hub that connects to one of the McFiver's USB-C ports. So I love this little hub. It's the Mini Sapuru. I think I'm pronouncing that right. They have a bunch of different versions, but I bought this little one and it's got power. So if you have a hard drive that's a spinning drive and needs a little more juice, but it's still a bus powered drive, you can plug it into the power port and it will mount. You're not gonna have this issue with drives not getting enough power and disconnecting. And it's got four USB-C ports. And I also got these little USB-C adapters that I use for regular USB-A connections and they work great. I don't have to reach around to the back of my Mac, which is in a closet, to plug in my USB drives. I just have this glued to the top with some double-sided 3M tape and it's on there like a rock and you can peel it off and it doesn't leave any residual on the aluminum case. So, you know, this only takes up one of the ports on the McFiver. It gives me four extra ports. If I plug in three SSDs at the same time on this, they will all mount, but they're not gonna operate at that full 10 gigabit speed. It's a great little hub. I really like it. I'm thinking about getting another one for the other port and put an extension cable on it so I can have the second hub sitting on my desk. There's a lot of naysayers out there that say it's a waste to put an RX 6800 XT in your Mac Pro 5,1, but it's just not really true. Look at my metal score. That is faster than an M1 Ultra, and it's actually almost as fast as an M2 Ultra and you know how expensive those computers are. And yes, it's in a PCIe slot 2.0, so if you throw a 6800 XT into a Mac Pro 7.1, you're gonna get the score that's on this page, which is about the same as an M2 Ultra. Interesting. <laughs> Try using knives next time. I like to game in Windows, so you know, my RX 6800 XT upgrade was an expensive one. I had a 5700 XT, then I got the 6800 XT and did the Pixlus mod, which could have killed the Mac Pro because that's a risky kind of upgrade. But I did it and it worked out and I can now game in 4K in Windows and I can play any game that's out there. Unlike when you have a Mac Studio, you're really limited to the games you can play on it. I know you can now get in there and get PC games to run on it, but it's still not going to run like you're running Windows natively. It's just not. And they might get there one day, but they're still not there. And there's so few games for the Mac compared to Windows. Gaming aside, I mix live concerts for television. Pop stars, rock bands. That's mainly what I do. And uh, country bands and, you know, some jazz. And I use Pro Tools, and I've been using Pro Tools for years, and, you know, the Mac Pro has always been able to handle whatever I've thrown at it. Not that Pro Tools hasn't had its own quirks over the years, because it totally has. I also shoot and edit shows. 
You can see Mark Letiri videos up on YouTube, which I filmed him at the Iridium. His guy mixed that show. It sounds great. He is an unbelievable guitar player. My Mac Pro can handle editing six to seven 4K camera angles, plus the mix in there, no problem. Yeah, it might take a little longer for me to render out the video. After eight to 10 hours of editing, you wanna go get a cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. It's not a big deal to have to wait for a little longer for a render. Do you really need the fastest computer out there every year that they upgrade them? You do not. I have been on the same computer for 10 years now. And yes, I upgraded the graphics card twice and I've upgraded the storage. It still does what I need it to do. If it didn't, I would be forced to upgrade, but it does. So as far as internal storage goes with my Mac Pro in SATA bay number one, I have an OWC drive caddy with a Samsung 870 EV two terabyte and this is where open core resides it's on the EFI of this drive the benefit is your computer is going to boot the fastest it can it's going to see open core on that first SATA bay and then it's going to go load the bootloader very quickly because that's where the Mac first looks for the operating system and then the open core bootloader will show you all available drives to boot from and you select whichever drive you want to boot from. I have Monterey installed on an NVMe on the Mic Fiver. And personally, I think it's better to not install OpenCore on your OS drive. And in SATA Bay 2, I have my Windows 11 install on another Samsung Evo 2 terabyte 870, which is what I keep all my games on, and that's all I use Windows 11 for is gaming. And then my other two SATA bays have spinning drives in them. One's a four terabyte and the other one's an eight terabyte. I just haven't relabeled the stickers that are on those drive bays, but that gives me a total of 20 terabytes total storage inside my Mac Pro. 16 terabytes in the SATA bays and another four terabytes on the McFiver via NVMe. The two spinning SATA drives I use are Seagate Barracudas. They are pretty cheap and they've been extremely reliable. Keep in mind that when you have all that storage, you gotta back all that stuff up. Most of the drives stored in my closet are eight terabyte Barracudas. I don't even know how many terabytes I got in there. And I store them in these hard drive protection boxes, which are very handy. The amount of storage you can have connected to a Mac Pro 5.1 is insane. With a McFiver, you can hook up a NAS to this thing operating at 10 gigabits. Maybe not quite that top speed, but you know, that just opens up a whole nother world of storage. And of course the 5.1 has the dual super drive bays. I have a Blu-ray in the bottom one and I have the regular super drive in the top. I rarely use them. And of course you could remove the optical drives and put hard drives in there if you wanted to. And I have a little USB fan plugged into the Mac Pro in the front, which sucks the hot air out of the top vent of the closet and helps draw cool air into the bottom vent. And as far as RAM is concerned, I only have 48 gigs, but honestly, that's enough for me. I could maybe see putting 96 gigs in here, but I check my RAM usage and I'm, I'm running Final Cut and I'm running Pro Tools. And honestly, I just never hit that RAM limit. I'm not doing a ton of virtual synths or something and samples in Pro Tools because I'm mixing. I'm not scoring films. Although I have scored films, I don't do it very often. I'm more of a live music guy than a synth and sample dude. Again, the old girl is fast enough for me. I also updated my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card uh, with this package, which is pricey, but it did the job. And I have a video on how to do that, step-by-step -step instructions. And you can pick up the parts separately if you want, but I just went for that package. And I bought this little antenna extender, which you can see it reaches all the way onto my desk and I never have any problems with Bluetooth cutting in and out. It just works like a rock and it's great. This is the antenna extension cable that I bought and unfortunately I got it on Amazon. It's no longer available and it has that nice little PCIe bay door that's pre-drilled so you just attach the antenna on either side of it and extend it out to your desk. And while this kit's not available anymore, you can just suss out the parts yourself on Amazon or eBay. 
Externally, I use the Sateki keyboard, which is very much like the Apple keyboard, and it allows you to pair four different devices to the keyboard, and you can just switch from one to the other. It's really cool. I love this keyboard, and the action on it's quite nice. It's very thin as well. Then I got my Midas M32R mixer and my Aorus 48-inch OLED, and then two cheapo Asus 1080p IPS monitors, which actually, for the money, they're excellent little monitors and they've lasted a really long time. And I like to spread stuff out. And there's my Magic Trackpad and my Razer Gaming Mouse. And on the left side of the mixer is my Contour Shuttle Express. I can't live without this thing. I've burned through about three of them. And it has five buttons, which I have mapped to Pro Tools functions like play and stop and switching different tools. My hand never leaves it while I'm mixing, while my other hand is on the Magic Trackpad, which I also have laid out with certain buttons for Pro Tools. It's time for bed, I'm being told by my Apple Watch. And as you can tell, my voice is getting a little tired. So to wrap it up, it's about workflow. It's about dependability. It's about expandability to me. I just hate the fact that you can't expand these new Macs or add more RAM or more storage internally. And you can't upgrade the GPUs. The only way to upgrade a GPU in a new Mac is to buy a new Mac. And that sucks. So for all of you still using the old Mac Pro 5,1 out there, say it with me. It's fast enough for me. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Click on some of those links in the description so I make a couple of bucks from spending whatever amount of hours I'm going to spend to edit this thing together. And uh, I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.